Hi. In this video, I'd like to go through a few um, crystallographic directions in hexagonal systems. So I'll show you the way to approach it and do a few example problems. <clears throat> so first of all, you see I've actually sketched out the process over here. And so the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to pretend that our hexagonal um, system, in fact, our A1, A2, Z um, three axes are um, x, y, and z. Pretend that, the, that they're orthogonal. In our minds, I imagine that that vector existed in just a1, a2, and z unit cell. Because remember, a3 is redundant anyway. <clears throat> so we're going to do that. And what I've done is I've sketched some cubes. I'm going to uh, illustrate the direction in the cube. From that, we just proceed as we would for a cubic system and determine the three index notation for the direction. And we're going to just give that a little placeholder notation. We're going to call it u prime, v prime, and w prime, just to denote that it's kind of temporary. I mean, we could stop there, but by convention, typically, we want to express it in four indices to avoid confusion with, uh, with cubic systems. And so we're going to do a little bit of uh, you know, simple grade five math. We're going to convert to the four index system. We do that, and then we enclose it. And that, that's actually this, you know, steps two and three are fairly straightforward. If you're familiar with cubic systems, you're familiar, you'll, you'll be fine with that. This is really then the hard part. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this first example. We see this yellow vector here originates off on the left side and comes up to the middle of the top um, uh, of the, of the uh, unit cell. So we could approach this a couple of ways. Uh, one would be, I think the easiest would be, we could just translate the vector over, translate it over to the right so that it originates at our conventional origin. Okay, And so if I do that, you can see it resides entirely over A3. So it's going to originate now at this conventional origin and then move all the way out to the top right um, corner. Another way, of course, we could have done that um, is we could have shown that within the um, <coughs> We could, have, we could have shown this axis system over here. We could have said, well, that's in fact A1, that's A2, and that's Z. And so it would have made, as I'm highlighting in blue here, it would have made another little uh, three-axis unit cell, a little parallelopiped over here based on just, again, the uh, A1, A2, and Z axes. And so that vector would, of course, look like, um, <clears throat> look like this. No correction. Yes, that's correct. OK. It would look like this. So OK, without further ado, then I can go ahead and I can, I can solve this. So, this vector here originates at the conventional origin, and it travels from there, one in the uh, A1 direction, one in the A2, and one in the Z. <coughs> so <coughs> the um, projections onto x, y, and Z are 1, 1, and 1. Of course, there's no uh, reduction necessary. There. There's no fraction. So our enclosure um, would just be uh, 1, 1, 1 in square brackets. Those are, that's our three-axis uh, system, 1, 1, 1. So now we're just going to convert that. We're going to say that u then, of course, is equal to um, 1 third of 2 minus 1, which equals 1 third v is again 1 third times 2 minus 1 equals 1 third. W, remember W is U plus V made negative. <clears throat> it's not U prime plus V prime. So 1 third plus 1 third is 2 thirds, and that's made negative is negative 2 thirds. And um, sorry, correction, that's T, and W is is w prime, which is 1. So then the only thing we have to do, we've got our u, v, t, and w, but they're in the infraction form, so we want to clear that pesky 3, right? We don't like that. So we're going to multiply across by 3. And so our final enclosure in the 4 index system is going to be 1, 1, 
um, 2 bar 3. Okay, So that's our um, four index notation for that direction. Let's move on and we'll take a look at this one. This one's a little bit more challenging. <clears throat> Again, we could do a couple things. One, we could define an, a new origin here and determine the point coordinates of the end of the vector. Um, or we could translate it in space. Let's see what would be easiest. I think in this case, we could just translate it along the A2 axis. So we know, of course, the A2 axis continues this way. And in fact, you can see that this vector resides entirely over the top of the A2 axis. That is, it has no projection into the A1 uh, axis. <clears throat> so if we translated that over uh, along the positive A2 direction, it would originate down here at our conventional origin and <clears throat> travel out this direction. Now, I, I'm going to have to truncate it where it exits the unit cell, but you can see if it travels two steps in the A1 with only one rise along the z-axis, that means it has to exit the unit cell at half the height there. So <clears throat> that would look like uh, this would originate at our conventional origin, has no component in the x or a1 direction, and comes out here and exits the unit cell halfway up. So that vector, of course, if we write um, our x, y, and z notation, our u prime, v prime, w prime, temporary uh, indices, the projection onto x is 0, onto y is 1, and onto z, you'll see it's gone halfway up the z-axis, is 1 half. So we're going to multiply across by 2, and we get um, our 3 index system as 0, 2, 1. Okay, So then u is going to be equal to, and remember, this is u prime, v prime, and w prime. So u is going to be just 1 third, 2 times 0 minus Two, so that's equal to negative uh, two thirds. V is <coughs> one third of two times two. And that's four minus zero, which equals uh, four thirds. T is just equal to um, negative. The sum of these two things. So, what's two thirds minus, uh, sorry, four thirds minus two thirds um, is just two thirds. So, we have two thirds here. So, negative two thirds is t, and w is just equal to w prime, which was one. So, again, we're almost there. We've just got some pesky fractions we want to get rid of before we enclose, and so this one's easy enough. We can multiply across by three, and so we're going to come up with our four index system of 2 bar uh, 3 2 bar 3 okay yes good got it right okay excellent but that was a little challenging okay and let's take a look at the uh, the last one here this one's quite challenging um, I mean, it starts over here, originates there, and travels up in the positive z space. It has a component in the a1 um, direction and, uh, um, and a component in, in a2. It's difficult to see this. I mean, if I, origin, if I translate it along the negative a3 axis, like this, <clears throat> along negative a3, it'll actually it'll, it'll come up and it'll exit this face here, this prism plane, this right face of the the hexagonal unit cell at half the height. But that's difficult to see. That's difficult to see. I think that probably a slightly easier way to see it, um, we'll see how well this goes, is if I redraw the unit cell over to the, to the left, um, that is essentially I'm going to just define this as our origin. So now if this uh, yellow dot here on the left-hand side is our origin, that would mean that we'd have um, our, our three-axis system over this way, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight in the, um, the edges of that unit cell in this heavy blue chalk uh, with the hopes that that helps you to picture 
what this vector is, is doing. Um, but realizing that this is actually challenging. So if you, you, know, you don't see it immediately, don't feel bad. Um, so this yellow vector then is traveling in this space. Now what you may not necessarily be able to see, depends on how, how, <laughs> you know, how well I actually drew my picture here, um, but it actually exits through this face here, um, this sort of right side face of the unit. Okay, so we can see that this vector, the yellow vector, is coming out of this uh, right side sort of front face of this blue um, of this blue unit cell that I've drawn in here, this blue parallel pipette. So if I shade that, if I shade that plane in, that face, just to illustrate which one it is, which plane, which face is that in our cube? Well, remember, this is our conventional origin back here. That's where our vector has originated. And <clears throat> therefore, this blue face I've just shaded in right there is the face that the vector has to be exiting from, which means the vector, and it's going to not show up necessarily all that well when I draw it, and, this particular perspective, but this vector goes from the conventional origin and then pops out halfway, like straight through the center of this front face. <clears throat> that is the, you know, the point coordinates of the place where the vector exits the unit cell are one in the x direction, one half in the y, and one half in the z. So that means if those are the point coordinates of the head of the vector originating at the origin, <clears throat> those are our projections onto x, y, and z. Um, and so therefore, our <clears throat> u prime, v prime, and w prime is going to be equal to, to these values. We're going to get rid of that pesky fraction. So it's going to be 2, 1, 1, multiply across by 2. Um, so then we can proceed straight from there to our u, v, t, and w4 index system. <clears throat> and so u is just going to be equal to well, 1 third times uh, 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 <clears throat> equals 1, 3 over 3. Uh, v is going to be equal to 1 third of 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2. <clears throat> That's 0. Um, t is going to be equal to negative 1 plus 0. So of course, that's negative 1. And w is just w prime, which was 1. So our indices are 1, 0, negative 1, and 1. And we're going to put that negative 1 above to make it a bar. That's 1, 0, 1 bar, 1. Are the indices for that vector in, four, in the 4 index system. That was a challenging one. That was hard. But I hope it helped. <laughs>